Hi everybody! Welcome to my next video. We are working on block 11 still. So I am a little bit behind. I've actually been really caught up on this block of the month. I've been able to get each month done before the next shipment comes in, but that did not happen this month. Mainly because I got kind of caught up in tumbling cosmos, is what it is. But yeah, it's also been a rough month. We've had some car troubles. Um, this week I was sick and we got in a car accident. Thankfully everybody is safe and okay. So just a little bit behind on things. But I did finish, I had a video if you want to watch it, on basting the first block in the month and I did finish stitching it. I did not do a video of stitching it. I can do a video real quick or maybe even at the end of this video kind of how I pieced it together. It was pretty straightforward. The book actually showed how to do it best. I just stitched in these little diamonds here. I stitched this to this so it created a triangle. Um, then the next piece and the next piece. I just went in order is all I did. And in my basting video, it showed how to get the ears so that they rotate into a circle. And that's the biggest thing. So you wanna make sure before you start stitching that you lay it out so that they rotate into the circle because then you get a nice little rosette on the back so that that i felt like was the most important and that is in my basting video more so than even stitching it together so really the big part was for let me see if i can move this up a little bit actually there we go the big part was to create diamonds so i stitched this to this and this to this that created a diamond then I stitched these together, these together, and these together I created four diamonds, and then stitched all together to create another big diamond the same as this one. Okay, so that was easy enough. And then same here and same here. And then once I had those four diamonds, I just stitched them together, stitched this one here, this one here, and then just laid in this one. So it was pretty straightforward on the stitching on that one, so I did not do a video. I feel like the basting is a little bit more confusing part of EPP more so than the actual stitching part so but if you have any questions about that please feel free to ask in the comments and I will definitely try to get this back to where it was try to answer any questions you might have okay so next up we do have two more blocks block 11 2 and block 11 three left to base so I'm going to show that in this video and then I also will show you I did get in my month 12 package that's our last package oh it's so sad but I did get that in and I'll show you what I got it should actually just be the fabric for the large sashing and the cornerstones that's in that package so we'll open that up at the end of this video so make sure you stick around to see that happen as well but we're going to first start with going through how to baste and fussy cut the two blocks, a so block 11 two and a block 11 three, so that we have that for prosperity. Because I know some of you are behind. I am, I'm obviously not on time this month, but I know a lot of you haven't even made it close to month 11 yet. So hopefully this video will help you in the future and all that all right so this is going to be kind of a matching block to our big block it has a similar uh top like the big the all ears but it's using the flower part and then the small diamonds on top and bottom and whatnot so let's go ahead and start with our small pieces because these are going to be pretty straightforward we need four of these I always try to start with the more straightforward blocks when I'm basting, just because it does make life a little bit easier to get those out of the way and then you can worry about the fussy cutting after that. So I need four, four of those. That's gonna be this dark blue fabric. And we did use this in the last block. Yep, we used this in the last block. So there's a little bit already cut out, but that's fine. So let's see if we can fit, we probably can fit our diamond. So if I fold that over, I can fit one here. Give me enough. I can fit one there. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and do it that way. And then we'll get our four triangles pretty, pretty easily here. All 
All right, I accidentally turned my camera off to cut those, but they're all cut out, so pretty straightforward. Really didn't do it with any rhyme or reason. So basically all I tried to do was kind of similar to the book is do the stripes so they were going towards this large, um, small end, but I think you can just do them any which way. I don't think it really matters. Okay, so our last piece is going to be the elephant fabric. And on this one, they <clears throat> just tried to get some of the beautiful flowers in on one side. So you just want to bear in mind that these are going to be cut in half. So we're going to center the flower on one side and the other. And again, because they're going to be like this, so you're going to want the flowers on both on the right side or left side. Okay. And the hard part is going to be to... So if we want the flower here on the fabric, when it's face down, then the flower is going to be face up on the left side, if that makes sense. So you want it here, you're going to do it face down, so you want it so it's facing up on the left side. So that's what we got to keep in mind when we're doing this one. So let's go ahead and open up this fabric and see if we can find some nice flowers. We'll probably turn on our light board again, and you can see... Again, that we already used this pretty good. So you're going to get some cheese, some Swiss cheese fabric, but these can definitely be reused very easily. So no problem with that. There'll be a lot of projects that I'll be able to get out of these. So, all right. So as long as I have enough seam allowance. Oh, no, because I have to do. So I have to do it upside down. Sorry, no. Okay, so I don't think I can use that flower because... So this always takes a little... I like to do this part live with you guys and not in fast motion because it does take a little bit of brain power to remember, you know, how this... Okay, so this... That's upside down. Okay, so I can't use this one because that wouldn't end up on the left side. Okay, so... All right, that's fine. We're going to end up with some Swiss cheese. No problem. Who cares? Luckily, they gave us plenty of fabric here, so I don't think there's any I can use down here. There's really none I can use here because it has to be on this side. So I think I can use this one would be the first one. Ooh, I like this one, though. All right, I think I'm going to use this one unless there's one. Maybe I'll use down here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use that one. I like this nice big flower down here. So let's, so remember, it's going to get cut in half, okay? So it's going to be like this, and you want it on this side, face up, so when it flips over, it's going to be on the other side. So that should work perfectly. So we'll just put a few lines of glue so it doesn't shift around on me. And I'm going to have the stem of this go right into the corner so I can get as much of this flower on here as possible and we'll go ahead and push that down okay so that'll work and then I think we'll use this flower that one looks cool and if I can get it yes all right so we'll go ahead and do our glue and we'll get this flower so again you want it as far left as you can so that it shows up good when you end up cutting it in half. All right, so we'll turn off our board and then we'll get these cut up. Alright, so we have all of our pieces done, so I'm just going to line everything up so we can base them. I should I trim these a little bit better. These are a little bit big. Not that it's the end of the world by any means to have 
bigger seam allowances, but I do aim for that three eighths. All right, so let's go ahead and line these up so it's going to be pretty straightforward. So this is going to go. So this goes here. And this goes here. And this goes here. Okay, so that's all like that. And then we have the opposite going the opposite. Okay, so this one, my ears are going to go this way, so they don't interfere with anything. These two will have ears. Okay, so these won't have ears, so that's easy. Okay, so these, these are easy. So then this is where, and then two of these are going to go at the ends where there's no interference. So this is where our ears are going to come together because these are going to have ears and then these tips will have ears. So what I'm going to try to do is, so for my triangles, it doesn't really matter. I just have to base them. So I guess what I'll do actually is I'll baste everything and then I'll come back to these two to show how I'm going to do the ears on these. So that'll be the easiest. So we'll go ahead and base it all and then we'll show how we do the ears on these because when you baste a triangle, all you can do is go around in a circle. There's really no changing anything up. Whereas with this, you can base this first or this first or one and the ears all change, but the ears aren't gonna change. And especially cause there's no direction to this fabric, it doesn't matter. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. And then we'll come back and show that. All right, so these are all done. So we just need two of our small triangles. So let's figure out how we're gonna do the ears on these. So these go like this. And then how can we do the ears? All right. So I think what I got to do on these ears, because they can't both go the same, or can they go both the same? Can I have, I guess they could both go the same, because I could do my ears like this and make both the ears go in, because they wouldn't interfere with each other. So maybe that's what I'll do. There's no point, or I could make a little rosette. Um, cause it's going to get cut in half. So, all right, I think I'll make them both go in. So what that means is I have to do my bottom first and then the sides. And what that'll do is it'll make my ear go in like that. And they should not interfere with each other cause they kind of go down and in. So I'll try that and line it up and see if that works. So we'll go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and line these up, make sure my theory was correct. Okay, yeah, so see these tails do not interfere with each other. So all I need to do when I put these down is just make sure 
that I have no tails there. That works out. And then my tails go away here. So all that, no tails, no problem. And then these will just, these obviously don't have tails. So you just want to make sure you put them correct where the flower is on the right side. And good to go. Looks good. Okay, so this one's all done. So we will get prepped and ready to do the last block in 11-3, or block month 11. So it'll be 11-3. So we'll go ahead and get ready for that. Okay, so we are on to our last block. I can't believe we're coming to the end of this quilt. This has such been such a fun experience. This was really only my second English paper piecing quilts I've ever done. I've been working on a grandmother's flower garden for probably about 20 years, just off and on. My grandmother actually gave it to me. It was something she had started when she was younger. And when I started, I took a hiatus from quilting. I was a big machine quilter for a long time. And when I started back up, I really didn't feel like I wanted to sit at the machine again because I wanted to be more interactive with my husband. Our kids had just gone off to college and it kind of felt wrong to not be around him so much at the time. So I took up English paper piece and went searching for quilts. And this was the one I found about a year ago. And it has been such a journey. I have learned so much from this quilt. The pattern's probably one of the more complicated English paper piecing patterns out there because it's not just working with hexagons. There's a lot of different shapes involved. So if you haven't jumped in and started or tried this, I absolutely think it is a huge lesson in English paper piecing. If you can accomplish this one, and it's really not even that hard, English paper piecing is one of the easiest ways to sew. If you can accomplish this, you're pretty much set to do pretty much anything in English paper piecing. So it's been a lot of fun. So we are going to baste our very last block. We'd still have to baste all of our sashing and everything, but this will be our very last block that we're gonna baste. And let's go ahead and get into it. So we're gonna start with our diamonds. These are gonna be fussy cut with this beautiful striped fabric. So I did have a piece left over from a previous week. So let's go ahead and use that. And we're gonna use our A diamonds, or not diamonds, triangles. And the way they have them done in the quilt is basically, I think they're all the same. So they're all done the same with a black stripe on one side. So as long as they're all the same, it doesn't really matter which side it's on. We just wanna make sure that they're all done where, so like if black's on the right side, all three of them, the black is on the right side. So that's what we wanna make sure we can do. So I don't think I can use this piece. So we'll go ahead and start down here and I guess we'll go ahead and do the black on the right side and make all three like that. So again, with this one, same thing as the other stripe. What I want to do is do a little dot and then put glue right to the tip. So you can see that right to the tip so that when I glue this down and I put that stripe right down the middle, it does not shift at all. Okay. And is that centered? That's centered. That's the hardest part is making sure we're not off kilter a little. So I think that's good enough. Sometimes close is good enough too. So, All right, so let's go ahead and do our second one. So you just wanna make sure one corner has a nice, so let's, I'm gonna do this. Now see, I can't do it like this because I almost made this mistake. Because if I do it like this, that actually puts my black stripe on the left. So even though it makes more sense with the fabric, I'm going to go ahead and do this and make sure we're centered again. Okay. And then I'll have that same. So I can't use this here because obviously it goes off the fabric. So I will have to either come, I'll have to come over, I guess will be how I'll do it. So come over one. All right, so that should work. Do that again, glue on the tip, and we'll go ahead and put this here. That should leave me plenty of seam allowance for everything, and just make sure it's nice and centered. All right, so we'll go ahead and get those cut out.
Okay, so the I went ahead and basted because this is just a triangle piece, so it's not gonna matter how the ears go, and this middle piece has no ears. So we just went ahead and did that. So we are going to go ahead and cut out the next piece, which is this cute little guy sitting on the hippo. So he is right there, that should be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and turn off the light. We'll turn on my black light so we can get him pretty good. And get out my piece here. So it's just going to go right over this. It is a little bit smaller in the triangle than what the picture shows because they didn't have the actual fabric sizes. They are digital renditions. So sometimes they haven't matched up exactly, but it's really not that big a deal. You know, it's just try to get it the way that you like it. That's all that really matters. So we just want to make sure the flat piece is at the top. We're gonna center our hippo and try to get a bunch of these fishies in here. And you know, I'll get that fishy out because the one on top doesn't make sense. So we'll keep all the lower ones though. And go ahead and press that down. And we'll get that one cut out and basted. Alright, so we have our last Queen of Diamonds block basted, and so when you go to stitch this together, you're just going to make sure your stripes go point in, just like this. I did do my ears all different, so every single one has ears going differently, but it doesn't really matter because there's no interference. Just make sure you're keeping that in mind when you're stitching it. And that is official. That is our last block of Queen of Diamonds all basted up. I just have to get it sewn together and we'll be done with all making all the blocks. So let's go ahead and crack into month 12. So this is going to be our fairy flakes and our sashing fabrics in here. This is our last shipment for Queen of Diamonds. So let's see, oh, we got some goodies underneath here. So we have our threads. I did do the thread add-on for this so that I would have a good variety of threads. So these are whites, obviously, for the fairy flakes, so that's good. And then we have our glue refills, which have been included with every month, which is awesome. And oh, look at this, a cute little fabric, um, patch to put on your quilt so it says date started date finished and who sewed it oh that's cute made by uh pink door fabrics that's a good that's a really nice gift and then we have our actual fabrics so I'll go ahead and open this and make sure i don't accidentally cut into my fabric so this will be our last shipment of fabric for this particular quilt I am also working on the Tumbling Cosmos with Pink Door, so if you have decided to do that one, you can check out my videos for that as well. I am absolutely going to do a video that shows how to English paper piece the large sashings. I already have a video up for the smaller inner sashing, but I will definitely do a video that'll show how to do these larger sashings as well as the cornerstones, so make sure you are going to check that out. And let's see what we got here. So we have all these beautiful colors. So I believe these are all our cornerstones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like nine different fabrics. And then a lazy stripe. I'm not sure what the lazy stripe is for. Let's see if I look at month 12. Huh. That one is a little bit of a conundrum. I'm not sure what the lazy stripe is for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks like I have 12. I need 12 fabrics for cornerstones. Or are they are some the same? Shimmer, windy, and with a glitter, fresh custard, it does. 
Hmm. Oh, glitter gets used twice. Peach fuzz gets used twice. So there must be another one that gets used twice. Okay. So nine, nine fabrics and then 12 pieces will get cut. And I have no idea why this is in here. So maybe we'll figure that out or maybe it was a mistake. I'm not sure. And then this beautiful fairy flakes. So very cool. That is the end of it. So I will do a video, like I said, for the sashing. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. But this is the end of the blocks themselves. I'll probably sew this block together, not on video. But if you do have questions on how to sew those last two together, I'll show it in another video how um, them all done just to give a real quick recap. But they should be fairly straightforward on those because there's not a lot of interaction in the pieces there. So if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I would love to know how far along you are in your Queen of Diamonds journey. Have you been able to keep up? Are you pretty, pretty much... Oh, sorry about that. My TV turned on. So... Let me know where you are in your journey. Have you been able to keep up basically like I have? Have you just started? Are you far behind? Obviously, it's not a race, so no rush to get it done at all. But definitely make sure you check out my other videos. And hopefully we'll see you in some more videos. Thanks, everybody. Bye.